Mitigation is any action taken to reduce the risk to human life, property, and environment from hazards. The long-term goal of mitigation is to protect lives and property that will, in turn, decrease the need for response and recovery. Mitigation also eases the financial and emotional stress of disasters on individuals and communities. Some examples of mitigation includes elevation of a home. It includes moving a community. It includes uh, the elevation of a water heater. It includes making a structure more disaster resistance. And the list goes on and on and on and on. And the key is first to identify what is, a, is the, the area that needs to be concerned with mitigation. Mitigation should be on the mind of every official developing a disaster management program. Planning for the most likely hazards will reduce the impact such disasters could have on your community. Successful mitigation planning requires communities to assess their risk and identify projects that would be initiated if funding becomes available. Funding under some of FEMA's hazard mitigation programs is available only after a major disaster declaration. However, under some FEMA programs, funds are available to communities without a disaster declaration. FEMA encourages state and local officials to assume responsibility to initiate mitigation projects without waiting for the next disaster. Communities have a responsibility to make their communities safe for the citizens that live in it. After a disaster, the community officials should be concerned about rebuilding in a way that's safer and stronger than before. We want to make sure that community officials have the education they need to take advantage of mitigation after a disaster. Planning for mitigation is a common sense approach to reducing the impact of a disaster on your community. It can save money and lives. FEMA requires the state and local communities to develop mitigation plans before getting funds for mitigation projects. In developing an effective mitigation strategy, communities should conduct a risk assessment to identify hazards, high-risk areas, and critical infrastructure. Identify existing and potential mitigation projects. Look for various funding opportunities to support identified mitigation projects. Pursue mitigation projects that improve the resiliency of your critical infrastructure. Engage the private sector and individuals to be more proactive in preparing for potential hazards in the community. What Baldwin County Emergency Management has done, um, each year we try to put on a series of classes for our local officials, for our mayors, our city councilmen, and also open it up to the general public. Uh, we talk to them about the effects of um, major category storms. In Baldwin County, it's not um, if we're going to get another storm, it's when we'll get another storm. And so we really try to push the concept uh, across the board to people to not only be um, proactive and thinking about mitigation for public facilities, but also for their homes as well. There are several mitigation related programs and activities available to a community struck by a disaster. They include the Public Assistance Program, Section 406, Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, HMGP or Section 404, the National Flood Insurance Program, and mitigation planning activities. All of these initiatives can play an important role in supporting the recovery process. When a public facility is damaged during a disaster, public assistance or Section 406 of the Stafford Act provides funding for cost-effective mitigation measures that would reduce or eliminate the threat of damage in future events. However, the measures must apply only to the damaged elements of a facility rather than to other undamaged parts of the facility or the entire system. The Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, HMGP, or Section 404 of the Stafford Act, is a separate resource available to communities for funding mitigation projects following a disaster. This program provides grants to state and local governments to implement long-term hazard mitigation measures after a major disaster is declared. The purpose of the program is to ensure that the opportunity to take critical mitigation measures to protect life and property from future disasters is not lost during the recovery and reconstruction process following a disaster.
The Grand Forks flood of 1997 is an ideal example of how Section 404 can help mitigate a community after a disaster. The flood and fire that impacted the city of Grand Forks affected 8,600 homes and 315 businesses. During the rebuilding phase, the city was committed to reducing future losses by incorporating a mitigation strategy. City leaders set the tone for rebuilding almost immediately after the water receded by enforcing local regulations requiring rebuilding with special flood protection measures and by implementing several other mitigation projects. The city's water treatment plant was rebuilt with measures to elevate sensitive equipment. An acquisition program, along with funds from HMGP and Community Development Block Grants, prompted 599 residential and 40 commercial properties in the floodplain to be voluntarily sold to the city. All of these measures will likely reduce the extent of damage from a similar event as the 1997 flood. The tornado outbreak that devastated several communities near Oklahoma City in 1999 is another example of an effective use of Section 404. After that disaster, homeowners were provided mitigation funds to construct safe rooms to protect against future storms. In that case, as in all HMGP programs, matching funds were required. The state, local government, or the homeowner is responsible for 25% share of the cost of the mitigation project. FEMA would pick up the remaining 75% cost. In some situations, mitigation funds from Section 404 and 406 are used simultaneously for the same structure. In Florida, after the hurricanes of 2004, mitigation funds were provided to retrofit damaged buildings to meet current building codes as well as to implement measures to exceed codes. FEMA administers the HMGP in partnership with the state. The state prioritizes and selects project applications developed and submitted by local jurisdictions. The state forwards applications consistent with state mitigation planning objectives to FEMA for eligibility review. Funding for this grant program is limited and states and local communities must make difficult decisions as to the most effective use of grant funds. While these programs are sometimes complex, they can be effectively managed with a comprehensive mitigation strategy. Flooding is the costliest type of natural disaster in the U.S., causing millions of dollars in damage each year. To reduce this cost and enable communities and citizens to better protect themselves, Congress created the National Flood Insurance Program, NFIP, in 1968 to help cover the cost of flood losses by offering flood insurance to homeowners, renters, and businesses, provided their communities use the NFIP's strategies for reducing flood risk. More than 20,000 communities across the United States and its territories participate in the NFIP by adopting and enforcing floodplain management ordinances to reduce future flood damage. In exchange for their participation, the NFIP makes federally backed flood insurance available that is central to a community's recovery after a flood. It is also important to recognize that individuals and business owners without flood insurance who suffer flood damage from an event that is not part of a federally declared disaster are left to recover without federal government assistance. The NFIP, while administered by the federal government, is funded entirely by flood insurance premiums. It is important for local governments to participate in the National Flood Insurance Program. Communities that decide not to participate are not eligible for certain types of federal funding. The purchase of flood insurance is a condition of receiving some types of disaster assistance. <music> Mitigation planning activities are crucial to maximize a community's benefit if a disaster strikes. Although hurricanes are a known major threat for communities along the Gulf Coast of the United States, mitigation planning can help to identify other risks and hazards. What we've found here in Baldwin County, it's not only the hurricanes that threaten us and the tornadoes, but we've also got flooding and wildfires. And so for the citizens here to 
to be um, proactive and, and put mitigation in the forethought of their mind, it, it's looking at what they can do in, in their own homes and being better prepared and thus building their confidence so that they don't feel more vulnerable for the next storm or the next event. Mitigation planning has five steps. Organizing resources, assessing risk, developing a mitigation plan, implementing the plan, and monitoring its progress. Pre-planning is, is very important. Preparation is very important. Um, get critical members of your staff to talk to their counterparts that have been through an event like, like a hurricane or, or some other natural disaster. To ensure the success of the mitigation plans for your community, remember, all plans must be approved by your state and FEMA. Without an approved plan, applicants will not be eligible to receive certain disaster funds. Plans need to be community specific, addressing the needs and risk of your particular area. Communities need to take ownership of their plan. Again, as with all disaster management, education of local officials and community residents is crucial. To learn more about FEMA's mitigation programs, you can access the following resources. www.fema.gov forward slash FIMA, your state emergency management office, and the Emergency Management Institute's training program. There are steps you can take to minimize your risk to disasters. Educate yourself about what those things are, make plans, share them with the community and with your staff, and FEMA's here to help you.